I am Amy Bales and I'm a physical therapist three and a researcher here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Cerebral palsy is a very heterogeneous condition and that's why sometimes traditional research or randomized controlled trials are not ideal because it's hard to, uh, whatever you're studying is only applying to a specific small group of people with cerebral palsy. Martin is an adult, he's 30 years old, he has cerebral palsy, he's been coming to Cincinnati Children's. In, in Martin's session of physical therapy, he was uh, participating in locomotor training. And what we're learning from his particular session and his whole episode of therapy, this was just one of several sessions he would have, uh, we were learning how long he's walking, that's the time, uh, how frequently he's coming to therapy, how hard he's working. We have an indication of how hard he's working during the session. And what specific type of intervention was being done was, of course, treadmill training with body weight support and robotic interventions. Martin is one of a large number of patients helping with a full-on data harvesting study to improve the quality of care in cerebral palsy. Pediatric Physical Therapy Journal has now published the findings with recommendations on how to improve methods of care by incorporating large data sets from real patients into new practice plans that are then put into action first on a pilot basis and then scaled up. Uh, first you plan what you're going to do, you do it, you carry out the plan, you document any problems or unexpected observations and you start to analyze what you're learning from that do. Uh, you study the analysis of the data that you collected comparing to what you thought would happen. Uh, you summarize it and then you act on it. You decide what changes you're going to be made, what changes you're going to make before the next cycles. In these cases where we're able to harvest the data from our actual treatments, we can include everybody. And uh, harvesting data from actual treatments is actually maybe a better approach. They complement each other. We need randomized control trials, but we really need to be also using real live practice uh, harvesting information from our sessions in order to, to improve. You've been looking at quality improvement, uh, a special initiative that you're, you're trying out, you're testing, you're developing, and it's all about cerebral palsy. Tell me about the importance of this. What is the importance of improving the quality of physical therapy uh, in cerebral palsy for children? Cerebral palsy is the most uh, common physical disability that we see in children and children with cerebral palsy come to physical therapy throughout their lifespan and indeed often we even see adults here at Children's Hospital that have cerebral palsy. Um, so for that reason, uh, because they come for therapy so often, so frequently and throughout their lifespan, we want to make sure we're doing the right therapy at the right time. What were you trying to do then in this study that you're now reporting? Well, we want to be able to uh, deliver the, the right dose of therapy. And in order to know what dose is, that really takes into account the frequency of therapy, the intensity of therapy, the time, how long it's done for, and the type of intervention. So in order to do that, we really felt that we had to restructure the way we document our sessions. Uh, so that we can track in greater detail what exactly we're doing. And of course therapists are doing this all the time already, so what routinely are your colleagues doing everywhere to document and to get the dose right and to assess it? What has been happening and is indeed happening now? So um, prior to this quality improvement project we always document our sessions in the medical record uh, but that information is not discrete and it's not easily harvested so that we can use that information to actually learn what therapy dose is best for each child. Uh, and through this quality improvement work, we've been able to change the way we document in the medical record. We've created a form that has discrete variables uh, that are harvestable and that we could draw out of the electronic record in order to do future studies to figure out and to better uh, predict what dose of therapy is best. Can you explain what exactly you did to make all of those things happen? So different than traditional research, quality improvement actually works in, in smaller steps. You start with a small group of therapists. We had a team of four. And uh, first we laid out what we thought would, make, would help us change uh, the way we document and we created a flow sheet in EPIC. Uh, when we tested it in those four people before we just told everybody they had to use it, we wanted to make sure it worked. Documentation, that's one thing, but what exactly do you need to document and how do you do it to make it optimal and to make it improved? 
actually, the, the way we document and the things that the therapist puts in the medical record relates to uh, how often you're recommending the child come for therapy, um, how hard the, the child worked, what was their level of effort during the session, which has a lot to do with whether or not you're going to uh, make the gains that you want to make. And also, specifically, what type of intervention for example, if you, if you might come to therapy and you might do some treadmill training, or you might do strengthening, or you might uh, do stretching. So we have specific uh, clicks or buttons in the electronic record that the therapist will click on to capture those elements that are specific to the type of intervention delivered. And of course, to harvest the data and make sense of it and get an evidence base for your clinical practice, you need to standardize this and you've got a standard form, haven't you? How well was that working? So we, do, we created a standard form uh, that the therapists were using and we were tracking it every week. We were harvesting all the treatment sessions out of the medical record uh, and we were able to spread this process throughout our whole division of over 50 therapists that see kids with CP and we're with over a 90% completion rate. So um, the therapists are finding that it makes their documentation quicker, more efficient, and we're able to harvest the information we're able to draw out of the medical record with some bioinformatics support um, to see how many sessions we do and what treatments we're delivering the most of and whether or not they're in line with the current evidence. And as an investigative tool, you've been using a system called Plan, Do, Study, Act, uh, PDSA. Tell me about that and how it works in practice to, to help you improve clinical practice. So again, quality improvement is different than traditional research and it uses Plan, Do, Study, Act cycles uh, where you test something and each time you do a test, you're planning it, you're studying how it worked, you're um, adapting it, planning it, doing it, studying it, and acting on it. So after you test a cycle, for example, when we first developed the electronic form, we would test, one or two therapists would test it, and they would say what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it, we would study what they liked and didn't, and then we'd either adapt it or adopt it. And that way we were able to create a system that we thought would work for many people before we spread it to others, and that's the PDSA. Are you able to give me any examples of what improvements you actually have implemented that you've been trying out in your groups? So this project really was about improving the process of us documenting. So we have improved our process and everybody that's treating kids with CP is using this flow sheet and in fact we're spreading it to the other conditions in our division and to the occupational therapists as well. Um, one thing we're able to use with the information now uh, in harvesting the data, it was, we were actually able to look and see uh, what proportion of interventions the children are getting that are evidence-based, if they're getting the interventions that there's most research to support. Um, so we're actually starting to use this data now to study our practice. You want clinicians actually to use these things. How much buy-in have you got so far and, and how far down the line of inspiring and motivating um, physical therapists are you? Yeah, so that's a good question. Another part of quality improvement is really um, engaging the team. So it's very important to engage the team and to start with people that are what we call early adopters and are interested in changing things because change is always hard. So we did a lot of that uh, throughout the process and some of the things we did to, to uh, motivate and engage the therapists were providing feedback weekly on how we're doing, what information we're getting. Uh, we, would, we would actually videotape therapy sessions and have the therapists watch them and practice filling out the form. And then we'd measure agreement between what the therapist completed in the medical record and what somebody who watched the videotape of the session. So we did a lot of things to motivate people. We even did things like the, the small team that we started with on the day that the flow sheet went live in Epic, we decorated their desks and there was candy around so that, you know, it was a celebration. In the, um, there actually is a quality improvement course that I took as part of this project that was six months long and one of the things they talk about is, you know, having a pizza party when things go well. So providing feedback and celebrating successes were, were really, I think, instrumental in, in getting buy-in across so many people. And if you were to boil down one or two practical messages that as a result of this quality improvement uh, initiative work, you would like to pass on right now to therapists, what would those comments be? 
I think, I think people will probably say that it's not possible to standardize the way we document and to do it this way and to click buttons in the chart, uh, that you lose your ability to customize what you're writing about. We feel like we need to write more. We kept the ability to customize some, but it really is possible to do this. And uh, what it can offer us in terms of our profession is enormous. So I, I think the message is that we really can standardize the way we're documenting. Uh, we can use this information and, and gather the data on what we're doing in sessions and measure outcomes in order to improve the care and uh, do the right care for the right child at the right time.